Hey lighting people, today I'm going to show you how I use presets and recipes in my programming workflow to make things way faster than any other method I've found for setting things up. If you missed my last video, I talked about some basics of how recipes function and what they do. And today I'm going to be using phasers instead of static presets. I'm going to show you how I set up the different types of phasers I'll need so that I can use recipe presets in my programming workflow. So our first step is going to be to create some universal phasers. I'm going to, of course, work primarily with um, dimmer today because that's just easier. The same thing applies to any type of phaser that you're creating. So I'm going to create a universal dimmer with one, uh, 0 to 100% dimmer values. And I'm going to make this... Um, Sorry, my phaser editor opened up on the wrong side of the page. Uh, I'm going to change it to a sign and then we are going to see what else we need to change to make this a preset. So in your recipe editor, you'll be able to impact the speed and the phase. So all we need to do is attach it to a speed master. Obviously, if that's part of your workflow, then you would do it and otherwise you would not. But I attach it to a speed master based on what type of value it is. I have pan tilt, dimmer, and color separate. And then I'm not going to do anything with phase. I'm not going to adjust measure because I only have two steps. In other cases, I might adjust measure, but not for this. Speed stays at 60. I am not going to change any of these values but I'm going to store this as a universal dimmer preset right here. And I'm going to label it dim zero to 100 fade. And so now I have a universal preset here. Keep in mind the things that we can and can't change in recipes. This preset is intended to be going into a recipe later. And that recipe is what I'm going to use in actually programming. So this is going to live in the background and I'm never going to see it or interact with it. Now what that means is I need one of these for every type of different kind of phaser I might need to use. So for instance, if I need one with more black space, I have to create an entirely separate preset for that. If I want to create one that has um, a different uh, low and high value, I have to create each of those separately for every possible combination of low and high values that I might need to use. And I need to create one for each form that I might need. So I'm going to activate my dimmer and make one with a pop form. And I'm going to store this one here and name it dim 0 to 100 pop. And now I have versions of this for each form. I would normally also do one with ramp minus and ramp plus types of effects, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. For right now, the other thing I am going to do is create another a, one with a different high value just for the sake of doing it. So I just change the high value. The other settings are the same. We'll store it here and we'll label it dim 0 to 50 fade. So now I have these universal presets for different values. And of course, normally I would have a lot more. I am going to show you my regular preset pools after this, but for the moment, I am just showing you how I put this together when I'm setting it up. So I have my universal presets. Now I'm going to need to create some selective recipe presets. So to do that, I'm going to turn on edit recipe. I have a whole set of groups here and they function in different ways. So my all spots is arranged on the grid. I have six in a row in the air and six in a row on the ground. And then my air spots and floor spots are separately linearized. My all pixels group is linear in case I ever need a linear selection for anything. My vertical pixels group is showing each bar on a separate space in the grid so that I can make some really cool effects with X and Y a matrix separately on there. And then I have a linear version because, you know, sometimes you need a linear version. Then I have my floor pixels and I use Mac Aura XB washes. And so they have separate beam and Aura fixtures and I have those arranged in separate groups. So whenever I am making a new set of 
presets, I'm going to want to take each of these and create a recipe preset for every group. I want my vertical pixels and floor pixels separately, and then my wash beams and wash auras. Now, when you're doing this, you see all the lights string out across the x-axis this way. This is not how the selection is going to be treated because as soon as we select a preset, it's going to create a separate recipe line in the recipe editor for each and every group that we have selected. And each group will be treated differently as if it's completely all by itself as far as a matrix. So I'm going to select dim zero to hundred and apply the shuffle and matrix by clicking on it. And now you can see it's going crazy. We've applied that. My shuffle and matrix has phase and shuffle values. And so this is automatically phasing properly. It, we can see in the recipe editor that these values are being defaulted to what's in the matrix object. And then I'm going to change the speed and the speed for each group is going to be different. Now, the way I calculate speed is since my phaser has the, um, I can actually show you this here. We can't change anything here or it will mess things up, but my speed is set to 60 BPM. It's tied to my speed master. Measure is defaulted at two and um, nothing is off with the width. So to have it be the correct speed, I'm going to divide 60 by the number of lights in each group. And that is going to be the speed I want for my default. Of course, I can always change that later. But for now, the speed I'm going to want for my spots is going to be 60 divided by 12, which is five. Then the next group is the vertical and floor pixels. The vertical and floor pixels, I do not calculate the same way as everything else because it ends up just looking weird because there are so many individual small fixtures. So I'm going to set these to 15 and I think that generally looks pretty good. And then my wash beams and auras, there are 10. So 60 divided by 10 is six and I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change the default fade time for all of them to three seconds. And I don't want any delay by default. No other settings need to be adjusted. So I'm going to store that right here as my new default. It has taken on the name of this one. So I don't even need to label this one separately. I can keep this name. We have the recipe. It technically contains the same universal data of dimmer zero to hundred in case um, we ever had a new selection of fixtures. We could select this in theory. Then we go to edit setting. We can see all of these recipe lines put here and we can always change the values here if we need to change something. I'm going to do the same thing with each of my other groups. So I have all of these groups selected. I'm going to select this shuffle and change the speed. Um, should have put them in the same order. Yes. So five here, 15, 15 and both of these will be six and then for the fade for my pops I like to have it be 1.5 seconds instead of three so I'm going to store that one here and then I'm going to do it with this one again uh, shuffle and speed is five 15 six and Fade time, this is a fade again, so we're going to go with three seconds and store that one right here. And again, I don't need to change the names. These have all of my default values. So whenever I go to do programming, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm actually gonna delete. We have a blank empty queue with blank empty fade times. That's how I like to operate. And I'm going to select um, my spots and I want my spots doing a dimmer fade and of course I'll set some other values in here uh, that will be different but when I pull up the recipe editor it is not showing me the values that I know are stored in this preset. I can see that they're stored. I have a matrix values happening here but I'm not getting that. So this is all a blank new slate. If I want to change something, it will overwrite here. But it's important that if I change the speed, that does overwrite what was previously there, which was five. So this is way faster now. But if I change like the X wings, any matrix data, uh, it doesn't do anything at all. 
because in order to actually apply that, I have to go here and set this to 360. Now it's using the wings. And if I were to put, set this to none, I could make it go across like that as well. Once I have set all of the data that I want for this queue specifically, I've changed it, then I can go ahead and store queue. And now I have this value in my queue. And if I click on here, I can see it here and I can quickly edit it here as well. If I need to change the fade time to uh, one second, then that's really easy to do. If I need to set the delay of zero to one, or I guess this is the two. If I change the two, it always changes the from to zero in any of these and fade, delay, speed, a matrix, whatever the case may be. What it all comes down to is understanding what types of data you need to have stored in every preset and what types of data you can change in the matrix object. Now this programming workflow may not work for everybody. I understand that based on how much individual customization you need to have and so on. But I find that it works really well for me because I can just quickly select a preset and change whatever I need, not at the default, but most of the time, more often than not when I'm using it, I need it at the default. One other thing that I like to do that is important to know is if you are going to be changing the matrix data for a recipe line, you want to have the matrix set to phase because if you do not have the phase applied in your matrix, you'll apply the new matrix and it will not do anything at all until you manually set the phase. I don't know where the phase is in this view. Um, until you manually set the phase to 0 to 360, then it will suddenly apply your matrix. Whereas if the matrix contains the phase value, then as soon as you apply the matrix, it will be applied to your group. Now I'm going to actually show you my regular presets and views that I typically use. So um, I do have the encoder bar down here usually, but I have my main view with my regular presets and none of these are recipe presets. I have a position, I do have fade and delay values stored in all of these, uh, not the beam, but the zoom and the position ones. I have my default fade and delay values stored. And so I'll select my presets, make changes potentially to the fade or delay in my recipe line. I will select my beam, focus, gobo values, change those if need be. Then I have these views, so I have stomp values where I have my um, 195, 90, 88, so on. These ones I use most frequently. Sometimes I'll go down and grab a 50 or something. Uh, I have to have some really low values for my pixel bars that are facing directly at the audience because they can't really get above at most 20%. So I have some extra different values real down low like that. And then I have my relative dim stomp and pan tilt relative stomps. And then I have relative color stomp values as well because I like to use a lot of saturation variation color effects where I basically do um, RGB negative 25 to positive 25 or whatever the values are. I use this one a lot. I use this one a lot. And so we take these color values, but then to stomp it, I need to bring them to a value. Honestly, I don't use all of these all the time. I use zero, I use 30, I definitely use 50, but not as often. And then I have my phasers on these views. So I have pan, three different tilt options. I basically don't use a ton of different pan and tilt phasers. I very rarely use zoom phasers, but I have them here if I need them. I have dim relative, I have relative pop and pop on. Because I only use the relative dimmer phasers on my wash lights, I don't have the super low value ones like I use for the pixel bars, but I have basically every little combination of values that I ever think I might use, and I have each form separately. Then on this view, I have my absolute dimmer phasers, which I have a lot more of these because they have to be able to apply to the pixel bars as well. So I have dim 1 to 5, 0 to 5, 1 to 8, 0 to 8, 3 to 8, 0 to 10, 3 to 10, so on. All of these different value sets. And then these are my more normal ones, 0 to 25, 25 to 75, 5 to 50, 0 to 50, 0 to 75. 
um, so on. And then I have not quite as many different options for the other forms, but I have most of the same options for pop, pop on, and pop off. And then I have my color phasers, these ones right here. Uh, these are not even all phasers. I got a little messy in my preset pool organization recently, but these are for specific programming projects. These are my normal template ones for rainbows, my RGB variation. And then I have this pool, which I'll just store random stuff in. That's where these should have been. But basically, the bottom line is you need to have every different form and value combination that you might need to use stored in a separate preset. But then you can grab the matrix values for different things and apply those. And you can also pretty quickly just go and change it in the recipe editor if you need something slightly different than your normal default. So this is how I have come to using recipes. And when I started doing this, it made things so much faster than literally any other workflow I've tried. So I highly recommend playing with recipes, seeing what kinds of different setups you can come up with. And you can do some really amazing things with doing a workflow like this. The one thing I will heavily emphasize is make sure all of your base presets that are going into the recipe presets are universal or global. Do not store selective presets going into recipe presets because then when you try to expand the selection that the recipe applies to, you're going to have to go back and restore values into those selective presets that the recipe is based off of. That's all I have for today. I really hope this video has helped you a lot with how to think about using recipes with phasers and so on. And I will see you in another video shortly. But until then, I hope you have an amazing week and go figure out how recipes can work best for you.